In, in this video, we're going to be talking about body plot and strictly uh, we're going to use body plot to uh, approximate um, magnitude of a transfer function in order to relate the uh, gain versus, um, versus frequency. Before we get into how body plots are done, how body plots are used, uh, it's important for us to talk about uh, some basic definition of log, basic characteristics of the log, uh, because uh, both the horizontal and vertical axes of um, body plot are log-based. And of course, the reason we use log-based is to be able to show a much larger range of uh, frequencies and range of values on a regular piece of paper. Um, <clears throat> so before we get in too deeply, so let's talk about some basic definition of log. Uh, we all know that log um, is defined as uh, log of A base B equal to X. Basically, the definition tells us that that means A is equal to B to the power of X. And that's a basic definition of log. One of the very common logs, and the one we're going to use here, is basically log A, where base is equal to 10. And since this is such a common uh, base, base 10, a lot of times you will see log is written without the 10 put in there, and the assumption is that the log is base 10. Um, so, so in this particular case, if I have log of A base 10, and that's equal to X, that basically means that A is equal to power of 10, uh, 10 to the power of X. Some of the common ones you can think about is, okay, so now let's go ahead and talk about what is a log of a um, 100, oh, uh, 100 and... Um, this, in order for us to understand what this is, we will actually, uh, we can think about it as if this is equal to x, that means what power of x will give us, about power of 10 will give us 100, because the definition tells us 10 to the x is equal to 100, which basically means x has to be equal to 2. Um, okay, now if we know that, then log, what is log of 10? Well, log of 10 is going to be, 10 to the power of a number equal to 10, which is 1. Now, kind of, now we're going to come to the next one and say, okay, now, if you know that, what is log of 10? <clears throat> then we say, okay, what power of 10 gives us 1? That's easy. It's power of 0. Now, what happens, what happens if this log, or we're trying to find a log that is negative? Then what's going to happen? Well, there is no power of 10 that's going to give us a negative number. So if anybody comes and asks you, what is log of A? If they ask you, what is log of A, where A is less than or equal, less than or equal to zero, your answer is this is a invalid log. There's no power of 10 that is less than or equal to zero. That just doesn't exist. Good. The couple of characteristics of log we should remember is like, log of a times b is equal to log of a plus log of b log of a divided by b is log of a minus log of b and i'm most of you have studies if you're studying electrical engineering at this level these have you studied long ago so this is just a baby refresher log of a to the power of n is equal to n log of a. So these, these, these are kind of the, the basic definition of log, some really basic characteristics that are very useful as we move forward and look at body plot. Before we go into the mechanic of the load, mechanics of the load body plot and how to plot it, let's have a conversation about, um, about what is uh, the body plot. The body plot, the vertical axis is referred to as the A dB, the gain in dB, 
because what it is, the gain is the log of V out over V in. So v, we're going to be saying 20 dB is 20 log of V out, a magnitude of V out over V in, the shorthand being H of S, the transfer function. So 20 log of transfer log, base 10 log of transfer function is our vertical axis. So let's think about it. So, so if, if let's say this is the zero, and let's say this is 20 dB, this is 40 dB, what does that mean? At 20 dB, we are saying that H of S is equal to 10, because log of 10 is one times 20 gives us 20 dB. Then what is 40? 40 is saying that H of S is 100. So each, even though these are equal sign, this is basically going from gain of zero to gain of 10, going from 10 gain of 10 to gain of 100. That is the power of log. Allows us to do a much broader range in a smaller space. And of course, we can go to the other direction and say, okay, minus 20 dB, that means the gain is 1 tenth, minus 40 dB, 40 dB means that the gain is minus 100. I'm sorry, 100, 1 over 100. And the horizontal axis on a Bode plot is omega in radians per second except it's the log of omega. And what does that allow us to, for example, we know that omega can, um, it, it's a log, we don't put it here, but omega is radian per second, but it's a log rhythmic scale, which basically says, if let's say this is a one, right here is one omega equal to one radian per second, here is 10, same distance gives us 100, because these are log of 10, the distance is log of 10, which is one, log of one, which is zero. Log, so we'll go zero, one, log of 100, two, is three, omega is a thousand, and then 10,000, and on and on. You can see how you get a much broader frequency range using this. Okay, now that we've got some definition under our belt, we've got some understanding of the, body plot on, under our belt. How do we go about plotting? So when you do in a, in a phasor domain or some frequency, the other frequency domain, and you've got your H of S, and, and remember that H of S is basically V out of S, typically divided by V in of S. And so, so that's telling us the gain. Uh, it's gonna look something like K zero, some, some constant value times S plus Z1 times S plus Z2 um, times S plus Z3, on and on and on. And then over here, we've got um, some value times S plus P1, S plus P2, S plus B3. So we basically we have, most of the time we'll end up with a polynomial in terms of S in the top, a polynomial on the numerator, and polynomial in terms of S in the bo uh, bottom or the denominator. We can factor them out, so the roots on the bottom will be P1, P2, P3, P for poles, so because why? Because if the S is equal to minus P1, H of S is gonna go to infinite, so you can think about it as a straight up a pole, and then the top roots of the numerators are called zeros. And the reason they call it that is because if the root is equal to um, um, the um, root S is equal to Z1, it becomes zero. That's why they call it zeros. Anyway, so that's a general form of it. Before we can start doing um, the work we want to do with the, um, <clears throat> with the um, body plot, we have to make sure that we have turned this such that it's always S plus one. So in order for us to do, we'll factor all the Z1s from the top, and we're gonna factor all the, all the P1s from the bottom. So the top is gonna to be K0, Z1, Z2, Z3, and on and on, multiplied by one plus S over Z1, uh, times S plus 
I'm sorry, 1 plus s over z2, and on and on. And the bottom is going to be basically p1 times p2 times p3, and on and on. And it's going to be s times 1 plus s over p1, uh, s, I'm sorry, 1 plus s over p2. And then uh, for simplicity, let's just name all of this, whatever that number is, as k, as a constant. So there's going to be some constant value. Then we're going to be able to say, OK, now what is ADB then? ADB is 20 log of the magnitude of h of s by definition. Now, we remember, we had this log characteristic of a times b is equal to log of a plus b. And then log of a over b is log of, oops, there's a log here, of log of a minus log of b. We can apply this to here, and we're going to end up with 20 log of k, they call constant stuff, plus 20 log of 10, 1, plus, and I'm going to rewrite S as, so we can kind of see it as J magnitude, so magnitudes, of J omega divided by Z, oops, Z1, plus 20 log 1 plus J omega over z2 and on and on and then the denominator is going to be minus 20 minus 20 log of s just j omega plus the magnitude of that uh, minus 20 log of magnitude 1 plus j omega over as uh, p1 and on and on. So what, what we're going to do, we're going to take each one of these terms and figure out what they are. And in order to solve this and figure out what the total gain is, all we have to do is we have to add all the terms that came from the numerator and subtract all the ones that came from the denominator. So, so let's take a look at, for example, each one of the terms. Some of the common terms, let's pull it out of here. So what happens if I have, what, what is 20 log of a constant? 20 log of a constant is number. So if you're plotting it, it's just going to be, and this is the omega, and this is the a db. Since 20 log of a constant is just going to be a constant. So this is basically the graph of 20 log. So now the question is what is uh, what is uh, the 1 over s is going to look like? 1 over s is going to be basically the minus 20 jdb. If you look at this, the magnitude is going to be magnitude of omega, which basically says as omega, so if omega is equal to 1, you're going to be log of 1 is 0. And every time omega increases by 10, this thing moves up by 20. So, so this is said, so if you were to do 20 log of 1 over s, and so 1 over s, so let's do that. 1 over s would have been minus, or minus because it's in the denominator, so it would be minus 20 log of j omega magnitude. This is kind of plotted this way. So if you got a db, then you have a 20 db here, and you got minus 20 db here. And let's say this is 0.1, this is 1, this is 10, and this is omega, right? So if you were to plot that, it basically starts here and oops this would be if the s was in the numerator by the way this is for if s is in the numerator for this case where the s is in the denominator the slope is the opposite direction because you got a minus in front. 
So for every decade, this is called a decade. When from here to here is a decade, from here to here is a decade. If you went to 100, it would be another decade. So if S was in the numerator, you will go up by 20 dB for every decade. If the S is in the denominator, as we had in this case, you go down 20 dB. So um, the only, the, let's do a couple other ones and then uh, we will start working on an actual body plot. So in the case where we have a term in the numerator, something like S plus, um, plus uh, let's say uh, PSZ1 because it's a numerator, that will translate to 20 log, we have translated that to the 20 log, one plus j omega divided by z1 so that basically means until we get to z1 this thing is relatively zero as soon as omega is becomes equal to z2 we can approximate it when it goes a decade forward is moving by 20 db so if let's go ahead and plot this real quick so let's say this location is the z1 location on the omega axis again this is the a db which is 20 log of that stuff and then our graph will look like this it will have it will be staying on the zero until it comes here once it reaches here let's say this is 20 db it starts to increase at 10 z1 it increases by 20 db and it keeps going like that so nothing is happening till it gets z1 because is approximately one log of one is zero so it's going to stay at zero at z1 uh, when it gets to z1 when it gets 10 times that then you have basically 10 so it's going to be one times uh, log of 10 is one times 20 so it's already gone by 20 db when you go 10 more it's going to be 20 this goes on forever and one last one and then we'll stop and do an actual example so let's uh, take a look at the case where we have 1 over s plus p1. So we have a root in the denominator. When we cleaned it up like we did here, the adb would be 20 log of magnitude uh, 1 plus j omega. But there's a minus because it subtracts. So we're going to have 1 over that over p1. Almost like what we did here. Um, this is 20 dB. This is minus 20 dB. And here is P1. Here is 10 P1. And on and on. And a little dot there. And a little dot here. So if you're going to go ahead and plot this one, so this is a, So again, as long as omega is equal or less than P1, this is the magnitude of this is roughly around. 1 which is log of 1 is 0 therefore 20 times 0 is 0 so basically it says as before p1 this thing is 0 right as soon as you hit p1 it's going to start because it's negative it's going to start dropping so when this becomes when omega becomes 10 times p1 log of 10 is magnitude will be approximately 10 um, again this is an approximation it's not precise you know so uh, what's going to happen is that this will drop for a decade. Decade is when things go 10 times the previous value. So this is a decade. So you'll notice that this will drop. So at 10, it will be a minus. So this is said to be a minus 20 dB per decade slope. And again, this is plus 20 dB. All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at doing a example where somebody's asked us to uh, give given us a transfer function, let's say h of s equals to a thousand s divided by s plus a hundred for the sake of this conversation. So we say, okay, first. We got to clean this up. We're going to factor 100 from here because we got to make it 1 plus s. So we're going to have basically 
a thousand on the top, a hundred on the bottom, and then we have S on the top, and we have one plus S over 100 on the bottom, okay? So now we have three terms. We got this term, and we've got this term, and we've got this term. So, so as we've talked about it, we're gonna plot each one of them separately. So the graph is basically going to be omega, which is in logarithmic. And best way, best way to draw this is, look, you're going to have this one is going to cross zero at omega equal to one. We know that with the slope of 20 dBs per decade. This one is going to cross at omega equal to 100. That's where it's going to start having effect. So I have a frequency of one, have a frequency, lowest frequency is one, highest frequency of transition is 100. That means it would be really good for me, for my graph, uh, when I draw it, to start from 0 0.1 frequency, then stop at 1,000. So I'm going to go 0.1, 1, 10, 100, and 1,000. So that's usually a good practice to start from 1 tenth of the lowest frequency, all the way to 10 times the largest frequency you're going to work with. In my case, I have a root, a zero on the top, which is equal to zero, and I've got a pole on the bottom, which is equal to 100, so I'll go from 0.1 to that. So first thing i got to do, i got to find out what is the log, I'm going to use green for this one, 20 log of 10, right? 1,000 over 100 is log of 10. That's easy. Log of 10 is 1, so it's 20. This is constant. So I let's say this is 20 dB. This is 40 dB. And let's say we might need 60 dB as well. 60 dB. And then down at uh, minus 20. I don't think we need the lower dBs, but let's go on and do it. So I will have the green one is basically the contribution of the green one is a constant. So that's the contribution of the constant for us. 20 dB straight across goes back and forth forever and ever. Now, let's go ahead and use a different color. Let's use the red one. And the red one, let's say, talks about um, this. Let's do this one. This is a lower frequency. So we're going to use the red for S. S basically says, I'm going to cross the omega x is at 1 always. The root 0, pole 0 crosses there. The only difference between the being in the numerator and the denominator, uh, because it's going to be whether it's plus 20 dB per decade or a minus 20 dB per decade. So this is in the numerator, so it's going to have no... Um, so it's, it's, I'm sorry, this is an S. So it's basically what it's going to do is going to have slope of 20 dBs per decade, a positive slope of 20 dB per decade. Last but not least, we have, and I, let's, even though I messed it up, let's go ahead and use a different color. I'm not sure what this color is, but we'll use this color. It's kind of a grayish color. And uh, let's go ahead and use the gray to indicate this one. This one basically says uh, the, nothing is going to happen till here. It's going to be all zero because it's one plus some frequency over 100. So that at this point, it's going to be one plus one, which is still log of one plus one is more or less zero. So I'm over here, <coughs> square root of one plus one. <coughs> so I'm here at that point, it's going to go, it's going to take a slope. This is in denominator, the slope is going to be minus 20 dB. So let's see what happens. Let's use a different color. So what we're doing basically, stuff in the numerator minus the stuff in the denominator as we talked about earlier. So so what's going to happen, let's see. Let's, let me get a little thicker uh, color and let's use a, uh, what color we haven't used, uh, kind of an orangish color. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that this at zero, this is a good place to get started. At zero, you're basically, you're gonna have, you have to add all these three lines. The gray 
to the gray line, the contribution of the denominator is at zero, so it's not gonna have an impact here. So at this point, the only thing I have is zero plus this, so plus 20 dB. So that basically says that this, this is the total, this is H of S I'm plotting. So H of S is gonna be, because of 20 dB plus zero puts us here, and then this has got a 20 dB per 20 dB per decade. So this is 20 dB per decade growth. This growth continues until we reach this point, 100. At that point, the slope has to, we have to subtract a slope of 20 dB per decade, which means since I've got a positive slope of 2 to 2, 20 dB per decade, when I subtract that, it becomes a constant. So this is basically my H, uh, ADB for this circuit. The circuit more or less look like a, maybe a high pass filter. As you can see, the gain grows as the frequency goes higher and moves up. That gives you kind of a perspective of how to do a Bode plot. So what you do with Bode plot, you find out what the, first I factor everything out. So you got a one plus something uh, for the roots and the, uh, for the roots of the top and the bottom poles and zeros. So you have a constant, 20 log of that gives you the constant value. And then you plot all the numerators. All the numerators will have a positive gain, positive slope. All the denominators will have a negative slope. Uh, and then you add them all up to get your body plot. So that brings us to the end of the body plot. Um, it's uh, a, a way of uh, representing transfer function in a graphical format. Now, today's world, we got computers, we could plug this into if you have access to a MATLAB or something like that and get a precise read on it. Body plots are really useful for a quick um, understanding of what this of what this uh, uh, circuit is doing. Um, and also, it's a lot of times, good to kind of use it for design, a quick understanding of what we are talking about how many terms we're going to have in the numerator, how many terms we're going to have in the denominator.